We want to see beneficial bees in the garden and on our flowers. Around our house lately, though, we've seen more of this, wasps nesting up in the eaves and others flying in and out of tunnels in the hill. Concern about declining honeybee and native bee populations brought a group of people out to build bee boxes. The workshop is part of the Pollinators Paradise Project in Hamilton. The bee boxes are designed to give a home to the native bees that pollinate our native plants. The small bee boxes are filled with hollow stems. In this case, they're the stems of Phragmites, an invasive grass crowding into wetlands. The hollow stems of various sizes are tucked into the boxes in hopes that native bees will move in. The native bee population, including sweat bees, carpenter bees, and mason bees, among many others, are called solitary bees. They go solo, and they don't produce honey and rarely stink. The bee boxes are best located in an east-facing position where the morning sun warms the bees up for flight. It's essential, too, to have a diversity of plants for the bees to thrive in the garden. Serviceberry trees, evening primrose, fall witch hazel, hepatica, wild plum are just a few of the plants that provide food and cover for native bees. Online, there's lots of information about building bee boxes and about native plants, and there's an Earth Day native plant sale April 18th at the Royal Botanical Gardens parking lot on Plains Road, Burlington. So do the bees a favor, make them a home, then serve them dinner. I'm Kathy Renwald for thespec.com.